Well, I'm sitting here in Australia. It is 8.30 at night, around 6 o'clock in the morning, 5.30, 6 o'clock uh, Canadian time. My time is all screwed up. Uh, I guess not really. Uh, I got to bed last night at uh, quarter to five in the morning. Quarter to five in the morning after doing the live video. It was a little, felt a little awkward doing it because uh, you're talking about, you know, three, four minutes of training. Some of the sets were small. Some of the horses made mistakes. Uh, towards the end of the day, we didn't get the last set in. Obviously, you saw that as um, the track was just terrible. Uh, I know they went out and went a mile with the last set, I guess. Curtis called me after and said, you know, they did train the last set. Uh, James had told me the track was too bad. I told Curtis, hey, wrap it up. And then Mario and a bunch of them went out. They went a very slow mile with the others. It wouldn't have been very eventful anyway to watch. Not the end of the world. Uh, really got a little farther than I thought we would, given the supposed temperatures. Yes, I suppose they started a little bit late getting everybody up on the track. So it's not always my fault. <laughs> uh, they, they're they a little bit late getting everybody up on the track and um, missed the last set. So uh, I really thought they'd only get seven or eight in and they got ten in. Uh, the tenth set was a bit of a dog's breakfast with uh, horses making mistakes and Obviously, the track was playing havoc in that set. We had a few other horses, had a few little issues uh, this week. We had a couple of horses that were scratched with temperatures. Now, Ale Sun had a temperature, and Taros had a temperature. But I guess he was kicking the wall a little bit the night before. His leg was a little filled up. It wasn't a big deal. He would have went had there not been a, an elevated temperature. Um, 2 out of 75 wasn't bad. A couple of horses, uh, a couple of horses I want to get looked at this week. Now, I hadn't talked to Sylvain Fillion. I talked to him at a couple of horses before he went to race at Mohawk. At Mohawk, but I didn't talk to him about all of them. I wanted to talk to him specifically about Rooney Blue Chip. Now, I saw Rooney make a break this week. I saw him make a break last week with James. I trained him the week before. I thought he was great. Is he just going through a growth spurt, or is there something more? Is he on a line? That's particularly what I want to know. And if I get an answer from Sylvain, he was on a line, then he may very well uh, he may very well go over to the clinic just to make sure everything's all right. If there was any issues to speak of, serious issues to, issues to speak of, I would have been made aware of it, and I was not. So uh, Rooney, uh, probably just going through a growth spurt. We all know he's a pretty big colt. Uh, again, uh, probably a multitude of things that could go into the way he trained is his footwear playing a problem he wears those flip-flops was the track a problem is he in fact on a line is there something bothering him or is he just going through a growth spurt uh i'm probably apt to think of the latter but um i do want to make sure so i do want to touch base with sylvain a little bit on him now nancy allison uh was acting up today uh, I said to somebody that was watching the videos here with me, uh, the replays anyway, with me, they said, you know, I watch Nancy Allison quite a bit. And there's some people here in Australia that watch our videos. And, you know, they said, I watch Nancy Allison quite a bit. She, she makes some mistakes, eh? And I said, well, she's very stubborn. Quite a bit stubborn than most every horse I know of in our grouping. But uh, just going to take repetition and work. Now, James said the other day she was biting the left line a bit. I thought I saw a little tenderness in her left hind when she was going today. Now, is Nancy Allison a little bit pinchy somewhere? Is that really what's the cause of many of these problems? Or, um, or is it nothing? And it's just going to, as I said, take some a lot, a lot more work and repetition. I'm going to get her checked out probably. So on my list, potentially Nancy Allison to get checked. Rooney Blue Chip, uh, I do want to talk to James in depth a little bit more about Nancy. And uh, you guys might say, well, you didn't talk to James today? Easy. James uh, got off the track at noon, which was quarter to five in the morning. I slept for four and a half hours. I get up, couldn't get a hold of James. And then when I called him, he was just going on the track. I didn't get a chance to speak to him directly. I guess I could have texted him, but I wanted to, I wanted to talk to him about those horses particularly the break Johan made afterwards. Now, I know he was just going too fast. But was he comfortable in the mile or just, he's a speed demon. He's fast. He's obviously smarter now. He'll sit and behave and wait. But um, he looked a little tentative, a little tepid when he crossed him over to the front. 
and then behaved well after that, could shuffle back, sprint hard on the end of it. And I had said in the video uh, finishing up that there's no way he's going to make this turn. And uh, he didn't. He got two steps into it, made a break. Is that just, a, uh, as I said, him going too quick? Or was he on a line? Was he doing something wrong? I couldn't see anything wrong on the video, but I would like to, like to catch up with James a little bit more uh, on Johanna specifically. A couple other ones he went with. Havana Unana looked great. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So we had two that were scratched to the to sickness. Uh, not sickness, just temperature. Ail Sun and Enteros. Two that I'm thinking maybe I'll get checked out. Rooney Blue Chip and Nancy Allison next week. No concerns. I didn't see any lameness to speak of. Didn't hear of any afterwards. But um, weeks now, Nancy Allison has is, is made more breaks than not with us. I'm not too concerned, but I understand as our clients out there that own the horse, you are concerned, as you should be. Um, just want to cover our bases, I think, with Nancy. Make sure there isn't maybe something in that left hind that, um, that we can't physically see. There could be something else going on there, hidden away somewhere that may be able to be treated up. But uh, truthfully speaking, just want to get her checked out. Same as Rooney Blue Chip. Get on line, get out of gear make breaks uh, the last two weeks. Was he on a line? I saw him make breaks. I saw him get out of gear. But uh, what's the root cause of that? Maybe it's just growth. But um, I would like to talk to Sylvain about that also. So two question marks there. Uh, I have a couple more. Obviously, I want to talk to James about Johan being one of them. No real concerns. Just follow up, if you will. Um, uh, otherwise, I think it's been a, it was a great day for the most part. We're going to go through all the babies. I have quite a list here I want to speak of quickly. Ones that really impressed me today. Ones that I thought were very, very good. Ones that showed up that I was waiting to show up. Um, a couple that really jumped off the page to me just off the top of my head. Uh, Canadian Titan. I thought this filly is quietly getting better and better and better and better. You, if you own a piece of Canadian Titan out there, you for sure have seen the progress from week one where we went with her. Then week three, we put hobbles on her and we started training her. Made breaks. Looked like a fish out of water at the open house. Just really not comfortable. And then since then, uh, very slight equipment changes. Taking the hobbles off her. She has really turned into a really nice filly. Progressing well. Uh, Havana, ooh, nah, nah. Made a little goof. I, I looked a couple of times. I couldn't tell whether she spooked when she made that very, very abrupt short break. Uh, as they started out, I couldn't tell whether, um, I couldn't tell whether she had shied away. It looked like she shied away, but I don't want to fully make an excuse for her, but she had no excuses after she was awesome. Finished up her mile very, very strong. Sylvain made a point to me in our brief conversation to talk about a couple of things. Knocked on drag, it was good, but forged in fire. He said the, the little horse that I went with later in the, in the middle of the sets, wow, he's a nice horse. And I said, well, Sylvain drove a Moticon Hanover early in her career. So he, he knows the family very, very well. Very impressed with Forged and Fire, which I thought was really neat. And I think it's fair to say uh, on the pacing side, the two horses that made the most sense to me today, the two horses that I thought were by far the most impressive, to me anyway, just off the top of my head, the two Heston Blue Chips. Bottle of Red, first over from sixth all the way to first, grind away, Held off the horses, looked really good. And then uh, if you didn't like how Brush Cut trained, I guess you're blind. Brush Cut looked incredibly good. Very, very happy with him. How couldn't you be? And then you can tell um, you can tell as the day went on when you look at Brush Cut, uh, his shares were gone. Then people are saying, is there any more? There is. There was some hidden away in the... Um, in the Shopify account, uh, a couple of people bought a couple. I think there's about 16 left. Uh, they're going to be going back onto our site uh, this week. So Brush Cut and Bottle of Red had a few more shares that were available there. Um, good. Good. I mean, obviously, shouldn't have any shares left, but did. Likely won't in the very near future. We had talked about claiming a horse. Uh, claiming a horse this week. I had about 85% interest in claiming that 10 claimer and not a horse that I was terribly interested in uh, terribly interested in having. Uh, I you know I kind of felt bad because I've been talking to Mark Weaver about trying to get one 
or two horses, uh, one or two horses for um, for Mohawk. And uh, I didn't like what was out there to claim. The horse kind of caught my eye. I thought he was all right for 10. Could he do in a 15? Maybe. Uh, didn't race that well. So um, ultimately, the feedback I got from our clients were was uh, just kind of looking for something a little better. You know, on the trotting side or pacing side, just something a little more, uh, something to excite uh, our clients a little bit more. And uh, Pepe did just solo or whatever, just didn't do it. And uh, I could have put in the 15% more, I suppose. But uh, I too am interested in getting something better. So we'll endeavor to uh, try and follow up uh, with Mark. Uh, again, he gets up a little bit later, so maybe when I'm getting up, it'll probably be a good time to call Mark Weaver and follow up on our discussion, see if there's anything there for us, what he has, what makes sense, and then in turn bring it to you and say, hey, uh, we have this horse um, that, that Mark said he might be interested in selling or would potentially sell. Um, this probably won't be a cheap horse. I'm thinking maybe forty to 45000 U.S. funds, um, and we'll see how that goes over. So... Uh, that's where we're at with purchasing a horse or two right now. Obviously in Australia, as I said, I'm here in Australia right now. I'm going to be here till March 5th. And we have um, four more speaking engagements. I am driving. I am driving in Menangle Racecourse Tuesday afternoon. I get right in the car. It's funny because the guy we're here with, Daniel Cordina, he's going to be one of our clients soon, Um uh, one of the and in, in one of the head guys for the owners association here in New South Wales and Menangle Raceway specifically, uh, he wanted to head down to Bathurst and take a look at some horses, some yearlings here. There's a yearling sale here on Sunday. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. There's a yearling sale here on Sunday in um, in uh, Sydney, and um, wanted to look at a couple of his horses, see what I thought. And uh, I said, yeah, okay, we can do that. Um, and then one of the gentlemen over here, a really wealthy gentleman, said, uh, you can drive my horse on Tuesday. Races at 240. Now, it's not like North America. When they say they race at 240 here, they race at 240. Uh, they're on TV. Uh, they're on TV, so um, they go on time no matter what. So 2.40, I'm racing 2.40 Australian time. I, don't, I have no idea what time it is your time. Uh, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, maybe. I, I have no idea. Anyway, um, I'll be racing in Menangle, getting in a car immediately from there, driving three hours to Bathurst. Uh, I have four hours until I uh, have to speak, and three of those will be in the car, check in the hotel, get dressed up, head over to Bathurst and do a, do a discussion with some... Uh, Owners and trainers, a lot of young trainers showing up to these seminars, something I don't see in North America. A ton of um, young trainers, drivers, entrepreneurs, even owners, some older people too showing up to these seminars. Really cool mix of people showing up so far and not something I'm used to uh, seeing in North America. So good for them. I think they understand they need a better way forward. There's a movie on it. It's going <laughs> the lights uh they understand that there's a better way forward and um they want to work at at uh turning the page on the past so to speak and really changing the way that um that they approach the future and approach horse racing and um you know a lot of the stuff we talk about is really common sense as far as marketing and advertising but not that common in horse racing is common sense sometimes and uh, it's a fresh look and a fresh thought for them, which is cool. Uh, but that's what they brought us here for. So that's the horses I thought I liked today. Uh, the horse, uh, an update on where we are with a horse being purchased or claimed. Uh, I'm going to talk to Mark Weaver tomorrow, hopefully. How we are in Australia. I spoke twice now, uh, another four more times. We have a couple of trips here and there. I'm going to do a little racing, maybe a couple of more drives on Saturday, and that'll be it. Try and stay off the fines and suspensions just portion of, of Australia and uh, get some things done here. So all in all, maybe not a perfect day for some of our clients. I know I had fielded some emails after. But for those of you out there, Sleepy Steve, Steve Labonte, three winners on the day. And I actually drove them all very, very well. So good for Steve. Uh, very, very happy to see that. 
um, you know, I'd sent a message out to our trainers today. Um, you know, I was, I was, uh, telling them, you know, uh, I might barb, uh, throw a few barbs at Mark Isabel and a couple of guys when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to work and, uh, you know, what we do. And, and sometimes I have to remind them that, you know, I might be over here in Australia and it might be great and the weather's nice, but, uh, to be very honest, it's no joke. You know, I'm here 14 days. I speak seven times, spread over 10 hours. We're driving, flying. Today, I got to do a little sightseeing, but for the most part, I'm here to work and work for the stable. And as the manager and head trainer of the stable.ca and our two-year-olds, yes, it would be great if I wasn't here. But as the manager of the stable.ca and uh, co-owner and operator, it is an absolute necessity that I am. So, uh, again, today was a good working day. The track looked like it held up okay until the end. Got some real good miles in. Going to talk about some horses in just a minute. That really caught my eye. Uh, and I'll be back in just a second uh, to talk about them, talk about the burns, talk about all the yearlings in general. Actually, you know what? I'm going to run through the babies right now. I'm at 16 minutes. I'm going to run through the ones that caught my eye. A little quick, a couple of quick notes I made during the, during the uh, drone session. Horses that I thought looked good. Miss Brampton, and I'll go, I think these are all pretty much in order of sets. Miss Brampton Beast continues to look good. Looked really good. Two move today. Strong, finishing up the mile. Sylvain likes her. Um, none of you have given much respect to Bottle of Red. Now, in saying that, her shares were gone the other day. There might be a couple more in the, in the holding account for the Shopify. But for the most part, it took a long time to fill this, sell this filly out. Now everybody's wondering... Who's this filly? I even had a couple of people a little upset that I paid her into the Breeders' Crown last week. And it's a long way between here and any Breeders' Crown win pitchers. But I hope you know now why I did. Because I could see the potential this filly had. And she appears to be realizing it. Jason just wandered up first over with her and attacked and beat up on some of her best horses today. So a great drive by Jason. And a great mile by Bottle of Red. Last half in like 10 or 11 over that track. Uh, Sunshine and Shade looked great. Beach Bum BB looked really, really good. Uh, and the second set, Johan, I, I, I guess I don't have to talk about some of these horses. Johan was flying on the end of it. A little too quick. Trotted the straightaway good, made a break in the turn. We don't want to see that. So um, a couple of horses had a little issue. Now, you'll see they were transitioning from a hard, icy, snowy track to a bare, hard track today. And uh, some of them had little issues. I noticed Fox Valley Shazam was a little pacey in the turns again today. She's a big filly trying to navigate a track. Now it's a hard track. She had a real problem with it today. Uh, Johan made a break. He's done that before in that turn. Going to try and button down on him and really get him under control. Smart, learning, obviously. Uh, doing his work well. James drove him very, very well today. And then he rolled off stride. Uh, not a big deal, but we want to get a look at him. Um... But I, I noticed he was still lathered up in the shoulders. To me, that's you see that in horses that are a little stressed out, a little uh, a little wound up, and we want to be able to work with that colt and get him comfortable on the track. I would say when you look at that lather, that stressful, lathery kind of way about him, and then look at what happened at the end of the mile. Maybe he is being a little stressed out in the turns. Maybe he is a little uh, came a little unsettled. So it's just a matter again work. Um, Work and repetition, he'll get there. Uh, really, blue chip continues to impress. I had somebody that knocked down Drago, and I made the thing. Oh, really, blue chip get up? And the guy said, "No, he didn't. No, no, he." It's February. Relax. Uh, and really, blue chip did get up. So just, just so you know, really, blue chip was very impressive today. Knocked down Drago, Drago continues to impress every week. Philly, that really was a coming out party, I guess, for her today. Just in the way she was driven a little differently was just for me and you. Now, just for me and you has always been moving. And Ricky did a good job with her, moving and moving and moving. Today, James set her, set her at the back and really just asked her to sprint on the end of it and really looked impressive. Very impressive looking filly here. Havana Unana looked great again today. I guess not again. She looked a little rattly the last couple of weeks. But James did a great job with her, and I saw he was protecting her pretty good down the lane. She trotted past, but rather than really open her up, he kind of kept her bottled up. And a great drive by James and a great looking filly. Jim, filly looks good, man. Really, really happy with her. Path of totality. I told you guys weeks ago, she was getting over the virus, still a little bit weak. She was a twin of Miss Mischief Maker. You may have missed Miss Mischief Maker today. Had a little bruise in her foot. 
Gave her a week. Not going to rush with that filly, obviously, for a lot of reasons. Path of Totality looked really good today. Steve got the job done with her. Very, very impressed with this filly. Overdue mission looked good. Made that break after the mile. Uh, but shouldn't have. You kind of put her in a bad spot. This goes really got to be a little more a little more conservative with her. But you could see the difference in that filly. Overdue mission. Powered to the front. And then he opened up, you know. It's, anyway, he, he um, and Disco tries and he loves the horses. And uh, was a trainer. So it's not like he doesn't have hands. But, um, you know, um, sometimes some of the horses are a little... He needs to be a little more conservative with them. Not a big deal, though. Not a big deal. Overdue mission was good today. Happy with what I saw. And we'll get her back in right order again. I told you guys the other day how impressed I was with her in the mile. Uh, not the drone day, but when we weren't droning. And then today, she looked good again today. And I'll more than excuse that little error afterwards. Rooney Blue Chip, as I said, maybe get him looked at. A little shoeing change. Sometimes when they transition this time of year... Uh, from that snowy icy track to a hard dirt track a few little shoe and changes are in order so not going to push any sort of panic button yet uh, old rune is going to make it over there to the clinic if he needs to be this week or we'll just make a few little shoe and changes and work with him but no obvious concerns uh, no obvious concerns with um, no obvious concerns with rooney just yet uh, what else do we got brush cut wow 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 Brush cut, excellent nation, looked great. Go back and watch the video. He came charging, he came charging first over. Looked great, looked great in the first over uh, path. Clear to the front and then brush cut had that enormous, monstrous kick on the end of it and really laid them all down. And I think it just kind of overshadowed the trip that excellent nation went. Very impressed with, with that colt today. Forged in fire. Sylvain was very impressed with him. I was too. Classic Con looked good. Jason came first over with him in an attacking position. Trotted hard on the end of it. Labero Hanover, another horse we never talk about. Looked great on the end of it again today. Charging up the inside. Emerald Miss. Keep your eye on this filly. I, I don't think there's shares left over for sale. Anyway, for those of you out there that own shares in a, a Emerald Miss, you have a nice filly. James liked her. I liked her. A couple of people that had watched the live videos sent me messages. Emerald Miss is no joke. This is exactly how her sister trained. And come training set, come qualifying sessions and racing in the stake races, she was a beast. I'm very impressed and very eager to see what is going to take place with Emerald Miss. Trafalgar. Now I've talked to you again and again and again, Capistrano, Capistrano, because I really liked her. But Trafalgar, this is the half-sister to... Um, our girl that raced last year in the OSS, the, um, ah, I hate when this happens. Anyway, this is the half-sister by Dally um, to our filly from last year, and she has looked absolutely tremendous the last little while and looked really, really good. What I liked about her today, you saw her because of her immatureness. She just wasn't in the barn long enough. When you put her in a position to get a little grabby, she did. Sylvain went with her today and was really gentle with her and had her horses rolled up alongside of her in a tough spot and um, and looked fantastic. So Trafalgar's a horse to watch. Now, if you watch, Capistrano was back off the lead quite a bit. Not my favorite thing to do. I'd rather them helmet nose to helmet when they're training. Uh, Jason set her back a little bit and then asked her for maybe a little bit more than she was ready to give on the end of the mile. And she made a break halfway down the lane. I think that was what we would call a speed break uh, more than anything. And certainly, I'm not very concerned with at all. So, uh, those were those fillies. Inland Beach, first start with the flip-flops off. Looked like a beast today. Manhandled the group she was in with. Watch Ev. James was very tender with him. Finished up strong and looked great. Marzane Canover was a little lackluster today. Usually, she's really good. Um, no concerns, Jason said, a little on the left line. Always is. Uh, but finished up rather well. Uh, or not rather well, not the way I thought she would. So um, no obvious concerns. She ate her lunch. She seemed good by all accounts. So uh, no concerns there. Arctic Force also went really, really well. Gold Watch made a couple little breaks. Hobbles need to come in a little bit. Need to put a bar shoe on him. Uh, I had mentioned last week that he had a, he had a pus pocket. 
He had a uh, one that was kind of bothering him uh, right front, and then he was okay. Looks like it's bothering him a little bit. So what we're gonna do is here's the foot, the pus pockets at the back. We're gonna take the shoe, wrap it around, and then cut it off here and weld a piece right over here. Now that's called a window bar, and that will take the pressure off this corner, and he'll be immediately sound on that. Give that foot time to heal up properly on its own. Pull those hobbles in. I think you'll see a different horse next time. Gold watch, you know, when you look at uh, Trafalgar, and when you look at Capistrano and how excited I am about these horses, this is the one that came in with them. Gold watch, very well bred. But um, we castrated him, cost him time. And also he had that pus pocket. That cost him about a week too. So he's missed about even two or three weeks more than the, the two fillies that came in. Uh, just not a ton of time for Gold Watch. Just going to take a little more time, and I'm sure he'll be just fine. Uh, what else do we got? Spend that money. Looked very, very good today. And enduring strength, you could visibly see this horse much better. Much, much better uh, since we castrated him. Spend that money was good. Uh, enduring strength was good. Globe trotting, pretty good. Trotted good. No issues with, uh, with globe trotting. So, a decent day. Those are the horses that caught my eye. I'm going to come back now in a minute with all the stables, run through them quick, then give you a quick overview of, again, these horses and all the other ones that I saw train today at uh, Tomiko Training Center. Back in just a minute.